What is up, grade 12? Welcome to Sir Sabinus Class. But before we begin, I would like you to be reminded of the following things. Number one, always jot down notes. Always keep your notebook with you and only write the things that are considered important within the discussion. Number two, you can pause whenever you want to. Number three, do not only watch the lesson and play the video, but instead, learn from it. Now let us talk about dance as a competition. We all know that dance is not only used for art, but also on other purposes like competition and entertainment. So for today, we will be talking about two topics, which is cheer dance and dance sport, which fall on the category of competition. So malalaman natin in this topic, how is cheer dance created? Paano ba nag-exist ang dance sport? How do we consider it? And why do we consider it as a competition? In definition, dance as a competition is where dancers compare their skills or show off their skills. So in terms of the skills that will be shown, it will depend kung ano yung required sa mga dancers. But competition is the main focus. So there are instances that mostly sa schools and in other places, may mga tao which prefer watching this kind of things because it brings us entertainment. Sabi nga nila, there are different genres in dance and iba't ibang competition din yung hinehold para dito sa mga genres na to. We have cheer dance, ballroom dance, street dancing, and hip-hop dance. Sa school natin, mostly nagkakaroon tayo ng hip-hop. Sa ating sports fest, we always have cheer dance, may ballroom dancing tayo, street dance sa Banyamas Festival. And this is not only for the purpose of entertainment, for the purpose of satisfaction ng audience, but also for competition, for the sake of those people who are performing. Sabi nga ng isang unknown author, A good cheerleader is not measured by the height of her jumps, but by the span of her spirit. So what do we mean by that? There are instances that cheerleaders, most especially flyers, those who are being tossed at the air, sinasabi nila na kapag ang galing daw nung height, napakataas nung naaabot ng mga cheer dancers, napakagaling na raw nila. But according to this author, it's about by the span of her spirit. I am very proud of my students when I see them conquering the challenges or the parang hardship in terms of overcoming their own comfort zone. Yung mga performances that they are doing in this course, in this subject, I am happy because they are being um, parang minamaximize nila yung spawn of, of their spirit. Parang at first they are not really comfortable, pero pag tumatagal they are enjoying it, they are starting to uh, parang they exert effort. Kumbaga, the same with cheerleading. Minsan, there are cheerleaders na yes, oo, naibabato sila ng matagal. Pero, in terms of the spirit, minsan kasi wala roon. And it reflects most of the groups that are winning UAAP. It's because you see the spirit of the group. And that is the same with a good cheerleader. Kapag cheerleader ka, hindi pwede ang nag hesitate ka in every movements that you do. Most especially if flyer ka or ikaw yung nagsusupport. Because one uh, change of mind, ang ending niya is accident or hindi magandang performance. So again, a good cheerleader is measured by the height of her, not by the height of her jumps or his jump, but by the span of his or her spirit. Therefore, let us define cheerleading. So, bakit kailangang i-define si cheerleading? First is because cheerleading actually is different with cheer dancing. So, ano nga ba yung difference silang dalawa? We will be knowing on the following definitions. Cheerleading, it's actually before, it's an event that is composed of different cheers, organized routines, pero for sport. Like for team motivation, audience entertainment, pwede rin competition. Cheerleading mostly if 
makikita nyo siya visually. They are those kind of people. Sila yung literal na gumagawa ng cheerleading. Parang sila yung gumagawa ng mga yell for the purpose of motivating their team. Halimbawa, basketball, other sports. Sila yung mostly may hawak ng pom-pom. Sila yung mga bumubuo ng mga formations. Pero walang as in dance na involved. So, they are mostly motivating the team or the crowd. Sabi nga dito, it is contains of different components like cheering, jumping, dancing, gymnastics, and stunting. So, as compared with cheer dancing, malalaman nyo mamaya yung main difference nila and paano ba sila talaga nagkaiba. So, the main purpose of cheerleading is to encourage the spectators of the events who are watching, syempre, at saka yung mismong team that they are supporting during the game. We have the yellers, dancers, and athletes which are involved in cheerleading and they are called as cheerleaders. At kapag naman when they are grouped together as one, they are called a squad. So, tandaan nyo po yan. Kapag magkakasama yung yellers, Dancers, athletes, cheerleaders. Kapag magkakasama ang mga cheerleaders, they are grouped together. They are called a squad. Now, let us define cheer dance and how it is different with cheerleading. So, cheer dance began as a relative field of sports and dance noong 1990s. Pero, it doesn't started as a cheer dance already. It's actually a part of cheerleading events. Nabuo siya out of cheerleading. That's why it's not the same with cheerleading. Magkaiba ang cheer dance and cheerleading. Isa siya sa mga uh, categories in international competition which focuses mainly on dance techniques and basic elements of cheerleading. But it excludes stance and advanced gymnastic skills. As compared with cheerleading, cheerleading, ang main purpose niya is for team motivation motivation. Medyo less sa dancing. In cheer dance, kaya nga diba, cheer lead, cheer dance. Cheer lead, parang you are leading a certain group of people to motivate. While cheer dance is you are dancing, mixed with cheering, mixed with uh, other techniques and basic elements of cheerleading. Pero it exclude before, it exclude stunts and advanced gymnastic skills. Ano ba yung mga stunts na yun? Mga tumbling, mga parang exhibition. So, dati excluded pa siya. And the performers are cheerleaders, hindi lang sila dancers. Mind you, there are people who can be cheerleaders but cannot be dancers and vice versa. Not all dancers can be cheerleaders. Kasi, ang tinatarget ng cheerleading and cheer dancing is flexibility. Na minsan, hindi common sa mga dancers. There are dancers that are not flexible. Pero may mga dancers naman kapag ka part sila ng cheer dancing, they cannot do modern dance, contemporary dance. It's because it's a different line of dance. Pero it can be combined. Yun nga, but very rare. Iilan lang yung mga, peop, mga tao na nakakagawa na. There are different terminologies used in cheer dance and what are those? We have the flyers. Flyers are the one technically that are flying. So, sila yung mga hinahagis. They are the one who are doing the stunts and they are thrown into the air. Most of flyers are actually small, yung mga magagaan lang, madaling itos, and pinakamahalaga yung matapang. Matapang, do not hesitate in moving Kasi the floor, the only floor that they have is the hands of the bases or the mounts So, wala silang sariling sahig sa taas Ang sahig nila ay, ay yung kanilang mga bases That's why flyers required sa flyers Matapang ka Actually, kahit hindi ka naman magaan As long as you can stay sa taas You can be thrown without hesitation You can be a flyer So, that is the first terminology the second one, we have the bases or the mount. So, sila naman yung mga tao that are in charge of holding and controlling the throw of the fly flyer. They are important because without bases or mounts, of course, flyers cannot fly. So, sila yung mga nagsusupport. They are also the one who are throwing them into the air. They are the one who are moving. Sila yung nag-change ng uh, direction, position ng isang performance. So, they are the bases or the mounts. 
Spotters or spots, do you know that they are actually the most important na role sa isang cheer dancing? Why? It's because their main purpose is to support. Sila minsan nasa unahan, front, at the back, side. So they support the flyers, the bases and the mounts. And most importantly, they are the one who are prohibiting accidents. If there are instances na baka malaglag yung flyer, they are there to catch the flyers. Plus, nagpa-props man pa sila. So, even spotters are trained. Hindi pwede yung spot ay pa tunga-tunga hindi alert. Kailangan ikaw ay alert ka. It's because whatever happens, you have to be aware. Plus, kasama ka rin sa formation. So, that's why spotters or spots are important. So, those are the main terminologies in cheer dancing. Ngayon naman, we will be talking about the elements of cheer dance routine. Anong elements? They are the one who are composing sila ang bumubuo ng isang cheer dance routine. Starting off with the dance technique. So, dance technique depends on the preference of the group. There are instances that we look for a certain theme of the performance. Most of the dancers do that. So, meron silang, sa isang group, they have their own preference of a dance technique. There are groups who prefer contemporary dance techniques. May ilan namang nag incorporate ng dance techniques like jazz, hip-hop, contemporary ballet, modern dance, ethnic, or folk dance. As you can observe on our past sports fest, mostly yung dance technique, mix naman yan. It's because it depends upon the regulation. Kung sino yung nag-head, kung ano yung gusto ng head, kailangan may certain bang dance technique. And there are, in cheer dance, there are governing bodies which controls dance technique. And here are some of them. Ayan. So, these are some of the governing bodies in cheer dance. We have the World School Cheer Dance Championship. Ang nire-require nilang dance technique is hip-hop dance. But in the Philippines, we have the UAAP and the NCAA. So, what do we mean by UAAP? It means University Athletic Association of the Philippines. While NCAA means Cheer Dance and National Collegiate Athletic Association. Sila naman, they do not require a specific dance style. Ibig sabihin, all of the groups that are going to join the competition may freedom sila to choose the dance technique that they will be using. Number two, we have the elements of cheers. What are the elements of cheers? So we have the cheer motions. Cheer motions are used to lead the crowd response. As sabi nga ni Carrier and ni McKay noong 2006. These are actually made of, of hand, arm, body positions, and still varies depending upon the choice of the team. Nung uh, Nag-cheer dance kayo nung junior high school. Diba, may, nakakatawa nga kasi nung grade 10 kayo naalala ko. Alala nyo pa yung mga movements that are uh, parang tinuro ng choreographer. It's actually a part of element of cheer. Ito yung mga movements ng mga kamay nyo, movements ng paa, ng body, yung mga may succession, may mga timing. So, it's part of elements of cheers. It, it's one of the most important. Kasi, these are simple steps which creates certain effects and impact on the crowd. Kaya nagkakaroon ng crowd response. So, here are uh, some of it. We have different hand positions. Under hand positions, we have the following. Bucket. So, Close fist, kailangan po facing down. Next, we have the candlestick. Kabalik na naman ng bucket. It's facing upwards. So, it's like you are holding a candle. So, kanina, like holding a bucket. Ito naman, holding a candle. Of course, we have blade. We have the jazz hands. How to clap properly. Dapat po ganan. Hindi po dapat nag, parang nagdarasal. It's different. So, yung clap po, dapat close yung both na hand, magkalapit. And, dapat nga actually, close din yung elbows. Tandaan nyo po yun. Close yung hand, close yung elbows. Clasp is the same. Close din yung hand. Better if close din yung elbows. Now, let us proceed with arm 
positions. Of course, flying V, low V, T motion, half T, touchdown, low touchdown. So, binaba mo lang yung touchdown going down. Bow and arrow, like you are holding a bow and an arrow. Dapat po, shoulder level, pantay po dapat. Muscle man. Overhead clasp. Dagger. Box. Torch, like holding a torch. L motion. Diagonal, K motion, check mark, and we have body positions. Beginning stance, different with cheer stance. Ang cheer stance po, tandaan, open po yung pump. Side lunge, dapat straight ang katawan. Squat, straight din dapat, proper. And of course, we have kneel. So those are the elements of cheers. Number three, we have basic gymnastic skills. What are those? So gymnastic skills are jump, stumbling, which adds thrill and effect on the routine. So, under jumps, it actually is a movement or, or a dance which requires stamina, strength, flexibility, and it's improved in different areas in cheer dance routine according to Carrier and McKay. Meron siyang four important elements. We have approach. It's it's the first stage of a jump. Imagine nyo na lang yung uh, para kang magbabak dive. So, approach. So, first stage of a jump, parang buelo yan. Lift, it occurs after a cheerleading leaves off the ground. So, para kang tatakbo, that's approach. When you go lift, medyo nag-jump ka na ng konti. Then you will execute or execution. It will jump, uh, hitting a jump at its peak or maximum height. So, parang nag-dive ka na in the air. Then, of course, you will land or landing. It involves whipping of the legs and feet together to end with a small rebound. So, hindi po pwedeng magbalibalik tadyan. Approach muna, tatakbo ng konti. Lift, you will leave off the ground. Execute, will do certain skills kung ano man ang balak mong i-achieve. And you will, of course, land. How about different cheer dance jumps? So, hindi naman natin ito magagawa since in tayo physical classes. But, here are some of it. Tuck jump. Spread eagle. Double hook. Toe touch. Side hurdler. Front hurdler. Bike jump, double nine. So those are the different jumps. Now let's talk about tumbling. So tumbling is a dynamic and excellent way to shake up a crowd up quickly. Di ba ang mga audience when they see someone na nag nagda tumbling, parang na amaze. So it's one of the crucial part of cheer dancing. So, this is how you properly do a forward roll. So, you squat down with the hands on the ground. Then, you will tack in the, your head in with chin down. C, roll onto upper back. And D, rotate onto feet, continuing to a stand position. Then, go to letter E. Next, we have backward roll. So, A, from a standing position, squat down, continuing to A. 
B. Sitting position with hands placed close to ears and palms facing up. C. Roll backward while placing the weight of the body on both feet. And D. Continue on through a squat position. So that is how you do backward roll. Ngayon, paano naman mag-cartwheel? Sayang kung physical classes, matututo sana kayong mag-cartwheel. So with one foot in front, stand on one foot and lean down until both hands are on the ground. Transfer weight from one hand to the other while driving legs above and over the body. Place one leg on the ground and continue on through a standing position. Now, here are basic formations in cheer dance. So, we have bowling pin and staggered line. Marami pang positions, pero these are some basic formations. And lastly, we have two segments of dance routines sa isang cheer dance. We have the music section and the cheer section. So, yung music section, it's the part where we add creativity and choreography. So parang ito yung part where in yung mga dances, formations, successions are done. Elements of cheers like hand, the arm, body positions are done. In the cheer section naman, ito yung part where in it shows support to the school, the team, or the programs that it represents. So ito sa ating cheer dance sa school, mostly sa grade 12 kapag nagpapa-perform ako, kailangan you always start with a cheer section before you do the music section. Then as the Routine goes, kailangan ba uulit yung cheer section and so on. So, kailangan meron siyang different sections. Hindi pa rin puro sayaw lang para magkaroon siya ng variation. Sabi nga natin, di ba? Variety and contrast. So, yun yung kailangan yung gawin kapag bumubuo kayo ng isang cheer dance routine. And that's it for cheer dance. Now, let us talk about dance sport. So, let us define what is dance sport. So, dance sport is a combination of art and sport. And that day, it's called as competitive ballroom. So, yan yung tawag before in the past. So, bakit siya tinawag na art and sport? So, as we all know, during our sports fest, it's uh, one of the categories in our sports fest event. And kaya siya naging art since it talks about the body, it sh shows expression. And this goes with a partner, which is a male and a lady, which is the main reason kung bakit hindi natin siya pwedeng magawa ng performance task kasi you need a partner. And they are actually competing against other partners na dancing on the floor at one time. Tandaan nyo po ito. In all cheer dance performances, lahat ng dancers and partners are performing at the same time. So, bibihira lang yung mga competitions which allows yung solo, pero kailangan sabay-sabay talaga sila. Meron siyang rule para hindi sila magbanggaan and later I'll be uh, teaching you how does that happen. Magic po ba yun, sir? Or meron po talagang standard when they are performing uh, dance sport. It actually provides an avenue to gain discipline of body and mind. Kasi, if you are a dance athlete ng dance sport, hindi pwedeng wala kang discipline within yourself and with your partner. You should know how to properly discipline yourself kasi it's a performance which requires a lot of practice, patience, dedication, passion. Kailangan may spirit ka when doing dance sport kasi number one, hindi siya madali. Number two, you really need time to perfect each routine. At ang isang routine nito umaabot ng sobrang tagal when practicing. We have two different dance sport styles which is commonly nagkakaroon ng uh, kalituhan and confusion kumbaga between the two. We have the International Standard and International Latin Technique that was actually codified by the ISTD or Imperial Society of Teacher of Dance. How 
and why did they came up with certain dance sports styles. So, isa lang naman po yung reason to have a unified syllabus for all those interested in ballroom dancing. Which means na para kung halimbawa, whatever standard we have here in the Philippines, we follow it to the standard of the ISTD. Big sabihin, even if we compete on other countries, other places, we have the same system, we have the same dance sports styles. Kaya po ang Pilipinas sa mga Asian competitions and not just Asian but worldwide competitions, hindi tayo napag-iiwanan in terms of dance sport. Imagine ng SEA Games, di ba? Kasali ang Pilipinas sa dance sport. Kasi we are using a unified syllabus na nag-came up doon yung Imperial Society of Teacher of Dance or the ISTD. So, ano naman po, sir, yung mga laman ng international Latin dances? So, international Latin dances includes samba, cha-cha-cha, rumba, paso doble, and jive. So, take note po on the cha-cha-cha. It's actually cha-cha-cha, not cha-cha. Magkaiba po yun. Mamaya, we will differentiate. While international standard dances includes waltz, tango, Viennese waltz, slow foxtrot, and of course, quick step. I'll give you a quick tip how to differentiate the two. Pag Latin, international Latin, these are dances that are most probably familiar sa inyo. These are commonly used for performances like festivals, ginagamit to sa mga competition most of the time. Kasi ito yung mga mostly upbeat. Well, not really upbeat, pero sila yung kumbaga masayang sayawin. They are used for informal gatherings, for um, gatherings which is used for entertainment purposes. Kasi ang international standard, ito yung mga slow dances. Kumbaga, it is formal in nature. Mostly to ginagamit sa mga debut, ginagamit sa mga royalty performances. It shows refined movements, not unlike Latin. So, pag standard, in connotation, siya yung mga boring na dance. So, pag Latin, yung mga exciting dances, while standard, yung medyo lilo and boring, quote and unquote, na mga sayo. So, there are also governing bodies in dance sport, pareho ng cheer dance. So, dito sa dance sport, we have the WDC or the World Dance Councils and of course, the WDSF or World Dance Sport Federation. So, yun yung dalawang governing bodies in dance sport. So, what are the different characteristics of dance sport? So, number one, very important, posture. The reason why we need to have posture, it's because it shows sophistication and confidence. And it makes the dancer stand out on the floor. Ito yung hindi pwedeng wala sa isang dance athlete. Kasi kapag wala ka nito, medyo wala ka nang dating. So, ekis ka na kaagad eh. Parang, it's a minus point. Wala siyang... Pag wala kang posture, wala kang dating, wala kang effect. That's why it's very important. And it requires a certain correct position, correct sophistication when you are doing dance sport. Siyempre, timing with the music. You cannot dance without timing. Line, it's, it is the stretching of the body. When you see dance sport, mga athlete ng dance sport, May mga steps sila na nakikita nyo para silang nag stretch lagi ng katawan, yung umiinat kumbaga. So, it's called line. It's the stretching of the body. Of course, we have the hold. So, hold is the correct position of the body with partner in close position. When you say close position, yan po yung magkaharap yung partners. Like what you see in the picture. So, you have to know how to properly hold your partner in close position. Poise, kasabay yan to ng posture eh. Yung poise, ito naman yung stretch mostly on woman's body upwards and outwards, tapos yung leftwards into the man's right arm to achieve balance and connection with his frame as well as to project towards the audience. I actually get a lot of questions about this. Sir, how do dance sport athletes maintain the poise that they have? Di ba minsan, if you see, mamaya pag nakita yung mga videos, parang you will wonder, Paano nila nagagawang maging consistent in terms of what they look like from the very start up to the very end? Yung 
parang sir, nakakangalay pong tignan yung ano, yung position nila. Is it possible? Yes, it's called poise. So, nakakangalay siya, yes, but it's under training, nakakasanayan na din siya. Next, we have togetherness. It's dancing of two people as one on the dance floor. Hindi dapat nagpapagalingan. It's a competition against the other partners, not within your partner. So, you should have togetherness. Or parang it's the connection between yung dalawang nagsasayaw. Musicality and expression. As you can see, there is character when dance sport athletes are performing. Yung mga expression of their faces, how they emphasize the expression is very remarkable. So, yung music, it actually plays a very important role in performing dances kasi may mga phrasings and accents yon that a dance sport athlete needs. Kaya yung timing niya is very crucial as well. Kaya kailangan, if you want to perform a good dance sa dance sport, kailangan familiar ka with the music that you are using. Presentation is how the couple presents their dancing kasama na doon ang proper costuming and grooming. So, we call the partner as couple. Literal, kapag nagpe-perform kayo ng dance sport, you have to be like a couple. Walang arte-arte when you are performing dance sport. Dikit ng katawan kung dikit ng katawan, eye to eye kung eye to eye. Plus, most of the dance sport athletes looks the same. Most especially sa hair ng lalaki. Yung parang nakapumada ang hair, medyo shiny. It's a standard. So, it's part of presentation. Power, it shows controlled, not wild. There are dancers na akala mo parang inaasin ng bulati kapag sumasayaw. Magaling naman sana. Kaya lang, it looks wild. Parang pakawala yung energy. We're in dapat controlled, pero meron siyang presentation or uh, parang may angas pa din. Pero hindi naman yung pakawalang energy kasi sumasabog yung movements. Which is the most uh, common misconception ng mga dancers kapag sumasayaw. Lalo na sa jive. Most of the dancers in jive, magaling sana eh. Kaya lang, the performance is too explode, explosive in a way. Kailangan meron kang control of the power. Foot and leg action is very required when the performing dance sport. Without these, you cannot balance when you are performing. So it's the use of your lower extremities, which creates, of course, balance and strength, but also beauty. Shape is the combination of a turn and a sway para magkaroon ng look or a position. Lead and follow is the communication non-verbally ng man and lady. Ang nagli-lead most of the time and actually palagi pala. Man, dapat. And nagpa-follow ay girls. Floor craft, yung tawag sa ability na hindi magbanggaan ang dancers which are dancing simultaneously sa isang stage. Ito po yung tawag dun sa technique that dance athletes use in order for them not to bump to each other. So, parang wala siyang pause, pero nakabox in kasi sila eh. So, floor craft is used para maiwasan yung pagbabanggaan from one couple to another. So, mamaya malalaman nyo pa yung other infos paano siya nangyayari. Intangible is how they look. Mukha silang intangible. Mukha silang very expressive. Very, uh, parang may showmanship sila that is intangible. So, how they look together in performing their dances. So, in learning the skills, meron tayong stages na tinatawag in understanding the actions and the figure of the steps. So, pag mag gusto mo maging isang dance sport athlete, meron kang sinusunod na a standard, meron kang stages para siyang in-earn. And medals are part as the starting point para magkaroon ka ng elements ng dance sport. Of course, bronze for starting level, silver sa intermediate, gold for the high. Now, let us talk about the international Latin dances. So again, ano nga ba yung mga international Latin dances? Sana naalala mo yung sinabi ko kanina what these dances are. So let's start with the first one. So we have waltz. So ang time signature niya mostly is 3-4 with uh, yung first beat niya as accented. And each step is equal to one beat. At ang counting niya mostly 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 
3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, nakita nyo, the movements are very refined, slow, and may pause siya. So, each step of them is one count. Observe the posture, the poise. It's very consistent from the first step up to the end. And kita nyo din yung lead and follow. Intangibles, all of the elements in dance sport is present. So that is waltz. Next, we have tango. So, kung nakikita nyo naman, the beat is very Argentinian. So, it was the first dance used in Europe which originated from Buenos Aires na dati siyang tinatawag as Barrio de las Ranas or the Ghetto of Buenos Aires. So, tango naman uses mostly poses kapag sumasayaw sila. And look at the face, the direction, and the focus. So, eto naman, sharp naman ng movements nito. Yan, nakita niyo yung poses and the line, the stretching of the body. And look how consistent they are. Observe nyo din yung paa ng boys and girls. So that is tango. Number three, we have foxtrot. Ang foxtrot naman, medyo smooth, progressive, and continuous flowing movements across the dance floor. Observe how smooth they are moving. So, it's like they are using swinging movements. Diba? Upward, downward. Upward, downward. And most of these dances uses spins. So, yung foxtrot, tandaan nyo, medyo smooth siya. Jazzy. Observe how to properly na mag-handle ang boy sa girl. Ayan, no? Yung kamay, kung saan dapat nakalagay. Because you know I'm all about the bass, about the bass, no treble. I'm all about the bass, about the bass, no treble. So that is Foxtrot. Next. Next. 
So, quick step naman from the word itself. Quick step. So, observe the movement ng feet. Tapos, para siyang uh, the same with other din naman. Pero, para siyang running, mabilis. Tapos, yung may certain beat siya, which is, they are parang hopping. Tapos, puro siya spin. Imagine how they achieve this con consistency. Tingnan nyo yung paa nila. Meron siyang hop. Run, hop, yon. So that's how you perform a quick step. Accented yung kanyang movements, mostly hopping ang ginagamit. Para naglalaro lang. So that is quick step. Next, we have Viennese Waltz. So, it is a kind of waltz which is characterized by a slight anticipation of the second beat na mostly merong romantic quality. So, ito yung mga ginagamit naman for um, mga events. Yan. So, observe yung second beat, meron siyang accent or anticipation. Para medyo nag mini hop siya on the second beat. Ayan, no? One, two. One, two. One, two. Parang tumatalbog siya on the second count. So that is Viennese Waltz. So now that we are done with international standard, let us now proceed with international Latin. So ito naman yung mga medyo familiar kayo. Starting off with cha-cha-cha, this is a Latin American ballroom dance with a fast basic pattern of three steps with a shuffle. It also has a fast rhythmic pattern. Yeah. So, kung nakikita nyo, cha-cha-cha po yung pangalan niya, not cha-cha. It's actually different. Tapos, yung movements niya is composed of a shuffle na ang tawag is chasse. So, chasse, yun yung movement wherein nagko-close yung movements ng feet. So, cha-cha-cha doesn't require a lot of holding from the partner. And observe, they are pausing. They are moving individually. So that is cha-cha-cha.
So that is again cha cha cha. So samba is a Brazilian musical genre and dance styles with its roots in Africa via the West African slave trade and African religious traditions which it is derived from. So samba mostly, this is actually yung mga steps that are used sa Banyamos Festival. So ayan po yung ginagamit doon. So observe nyo yung hips movement. It requires a lot of practice. Makembot kasi ang samba. So it uses commonly dosido step. It uses batokada steps. Release from man, women, pa ikot ikot po. So releasing madami jan commonly uses. Plus stop and pauses. So that is again samba. Next. Rumba naman is a kind of a song and a dance which originated from Cuba which uses for of rhythm and a combination of Cuba's music dance traditions. So yung rumba medyo uh, ano siya parang in, it's intense in terms of the yung connection is present between the partners. Tapos yung Cuba yung nag-start so they are commonly using Cuban motion. So, pag Cuban motion, yung hips niya, it uses the figure 8 motion. So, medyo mabagal siya as compared with other dances. And so, medyo sensual siya. Medyo touchy. So, dito sobrang present yung line or the stretch in the human body. So, that is rumba.
So, those are the different ballroom dance forms. So, meron tayong international standard at meron din po tayong international Latin. Now, on the last part, let us talk about the basic dance sport terminologies. First, we have the name of the figure. Siyempre, ito yung identification of each figure in a dance style. We have step numbers or the counting or the number of steps in a figure. We have the alignment, which is the position of the feet in relation to the room. Ano yung room? Mamaya ipapakita ko po sa inyo. So, the amount of turn is measured between the feet. So, hindi po kasi lahat ng turns are the same. We have whole turn, we have half turn, and other examples of turn as well. The footwork refers to the part wherein the foot is in contact with the floor. Timing, syempre, is the synchronization of actions with the beat of the music. Without timing, simply, you cannot dance properly. So now, this is what I was telling you a while ago. Sa isang dance sport arena or dance sport stage performance, we have these different terminologies. So first, we have the wall. So yung walls po, literally, mga pader po yan on the auditorium itself. We have this diagonal line to the wall. Ito po yan, the arrow that you see here. The same with other part of the stage. We have the center line. We have the LOD or the line of dance. So, ang line of dance po is counterclockwise po ang ikot. Meaning, if you are going ng clockwise, you are against the line of dance. We also have the diagonal to center. We have the diagonal center sa kabila and yung diagonal to the wall which is against the LOD. So, I know medyo technical siya pero para magets nyo, ito po yung other terminologies. We have the line of dance. So, naalala nyo kanina yung LOD. LOD is the counterclockwise, the direction around the floor. Wall, it's the direction perpendicular to the line of dance, which point towards the wall of the room. So, yung four corners of the wall, four parts of the wall or the room. The center is the direction, which is perpendicular sa lahat ng part of the auditorium. We have different positions in uh, dance sport. Marami pa siya, pero here are some of the common. We have the promenade position, which is a V-shaped dance position. Yung first po yan na picture, which both man and lady move forward and in the same direction towards the end of the V. So, imagine niyo may letter V sila na sinusunod. And pag promenade position, they are going towards the end of the V position. Close position is the normal hold where the partners stand facing each other in body contact slightly offset to the left. So, ito yung common na ginagamit sa mga waltz. While open position is any dance position wherein a man and a lady stand apart or slightly apart without taking a close position dance or hold. So, yung open naman mostly one hand contact lang to. So, medyo open lang kayo ng bahagya. So, that, those are some of the uh, positions in dance sport. And lastly, we have the open facing position, a variation of open position where the man and lady standing apart facing each other, usually with one or two hand connection. So, yung first picture. And outside the man is the right, outside partner position, wherein it is a variation of the closed position where the tracks of the feet is or are slightly offset. So, those are the basic terminologies in dance sport. I hope you learned something on our lesson for today about cheer dance and dance sport. Hopefully, someday, maybe since hindi tayo napagbigyan ngayon, maybe when you are in college or when you um, had this opportunity, don't forget to grab it kasi it will be worth it. Tandaan nyo yan. Sana may apply nyo lahat ng natutunan nyo with this lesson. So that is all. Thank you and see you on our next video lesson. Thank you and enjoy your day.